Man, I am, I'm making, I'm barely this making like, it through today. You guys just flew in from San Francisco? Yeah, we've been here about three days now. I was chipper this morning. I was full of beans this morning. Right now, I just want to go take a nap. Well, we were in London last weekend and then flew to San Francisco and, flew, and came yeah. back. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're going to talk, and I've read, everybody here has read about this. Like, I mean, you guys have had some outstanding success in a year. It's um, a, it's, we're off to a good start. Yeah, and we'll get into that deeply. Yeah. But my question is this. You, every single tech event, you guys are, <laughs> bam, you are there. You're Johnny on the spot. Why are you doing this at this point? Like, you know, you know you're all billionaires. <laughs> why, are you, why are you messing around with these events? Do you need another pillow? You okay? I wanted you to have this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> seriously, why are you doing these? Is I only agreed because Carl Lagerfeld did it. So, you know, that, that was my motivation. You, you know, I think there's a couple things. Um, <laughs> one is we're trying to bring a whole lot more color to the world. So, um, you know, we, had, we like to have fun and tell our story. The other thing is, um, just frankly, you know, we've been a transparent company from the very beginning. Yeah. I blog about everything, put it all out there. And you know, we, think, we really believe that the more people who know our story, the more that they'll get behind what we're doing. Um, and, and that's all great. But yeah. that is what you said backstage when I asked you the same question. <laughs> what you said backstage is, oh, we're going to a Madonna con uh, concert in, in Barcelona tomorrow. Yeah, this was kind of a stop on the way. And this is a yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. I, yeah. And then I said, is Madonna, how old is she now? And, and then I got yelled at because I, I estimated she was 60, and it turns out she's 53. 53. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. So really, you're going to a Madonna concert, and you stop by the web on the way to mention that you're doing well and you've acquired a company. Well, you know, so we, we, yeah. we did a few things a couple months ago. <laughs> we were putting our schedule together, and we said, wow, you know, we need to be in London for the web, and Madonna's going to be in Barcelona the next day, so let's acquire a company around the same time frame, and then we just put the whole thing together. So. And celebrate dancing to Madonna. There you go. Yeah, are you guys gay? No. Are, yeah. No, I did yeah, because... <laughs> Come on, shoes like this, really? <laughs> <laughs> Because wasn't Fab? <laughs> no one's ever done that at a tech event before, have they? I, 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 I thought you were going to do like a Tom Cruise Oprah moment there. So <laughs> Fab was like a gay social thing. Yeah. And 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 which is a great is fabulous. Fab, fabulous, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is a great name for a gay social yeah. network. Yeah. Uh, it's no longer that. Like, what happened there? Yeah. So, so. Uh, Bradford and I have known each other for 13 years now. Um, we actually met each other at a gay nightclub <laughs> in 1999. Dancing uh, to Madonna. Yeah, honest story. Um, and <laughs> you can't make You're cracking you up. You can't make this stuff up <laughs> if you try. Really. Um, so we've you know we've been friends for a long time. I sold a company called Social Media to Zing in Europe yep. uh, in 2009, uh, and when was the chief product officer at Zing for a year, and you know helped modernize yeah. their platform while at the same time thinking about what I want to do next and um, living in Germany for a year with my boyfriend being back in New York, we were kept trying to find ways to meet up around the world and do sorts of fun things yeah. and we're like, there really was no kind of gay guide to where to go, what to do and right. who to meet and all that. So we came up with this idea behind, basically it was like, you know, gay Yelp meets gay Foursquare meets et cetera. And, yeah, super gay. Uh, super gay. Super gay. And, yeah. you know, I, I called the gayest person I know to see if he'd help me uh, join He's him. also, uh, by the way, and I know I have a lot of gay friends, he's also the gayest person I know at this point. <laughs> yeah. And Bradford and I just met about an hour ago. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, so, so literally what went down, so I, I was at Zynga a year to the day. I'm going to keep the straight face. Um, uh, I'm just trying to, you do so many interviews, I'm trying to do one that's just a tiny bit different. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. So um, that didn't work out, though. It did not work out. And so, you know... Yeah. Why not? Well, it I mean, did work out to some extent. I mean, Jason and I solidified a working relationship, which, yeah. so, you know, looking back on it, you know, the site itself was a failure, but um, we realized we wanted to stay working together. Yeah. yeah. And we figured out a way to make it work. Yeah. yeah and, you know, so... I, you know, I started a company before that called Jobster, which was... You know, Hold on, I want to get to Jobster we'll get a bit. Yeah. <laughs> but one of my lessons from Jobster was, you know, get the product right. And I also started yeah. to really get this notion that if you don't get the product right within a year, just start, you know, start over and do something else. Because I really think at this yeah. day and age that you, know, you, really, you, know, you get customer feedback so quickly, and yeah. you can iterate your way towards building a new feature, but you can't iterate your way towards a business model forever. So Fabulous was, was, it, was great. Well, actually, so we, yeah. we built a, a beautiful interface with great functionality, and yeah. we couldn't get a single person to use it. And I mean, we, yeah. we, we had, had 100,000 people using it, and that was, our ambition was bigger than that. And the yeah. biggest thing for us is we couldn't get our friends to use it. Yeah. And we kept hearing, like, all, you know, all the press and tech bloggers and everything were saying, you know, Fabulous is gorgeous, the apps are great, you know, the functionality is fantastic. And you couldn't, yeah. you know, so it was like building a, a product without a market. Right. 
And so we got together over a few bottles of wine and said, yeah. hey, look, you know, we like working with each other. We clearly can build good product. Let's go do something we could be the best at. And literally, yeah. we took a napkin and you know, I drew a circle on the napkin and I said, we're going to choose one thing. And we're just yeah. going to do that one thing better than anybody else in the world. Yeah. And yeah. That, that one thing would be the center of what we're most passionate about. Um, what yeah. we really think we could literally you know, be the best at, and what a, is a big untapped market. Um, what's that? What is the thing you're most passionate about? Well, that's the thing. It, was like, it took us like a second it's to say design. pizza design. t-shirt. Bradford was showing me like, <laughs> your, your, the, the, your most favorite item that you've ever sold is a, is a pizza t-shirt. Well, you know, as being the gayest person you've ever met, uh, yeah, my favorite I mean thing in the world changes yeah. every five seconds. So at that moment, oh, yes. Yeah. So it's, I mean, that's why I'm so good at uh, what I do is that, you know, it... it I see the beauty in pretty much anything out there, and so How the pizza shirt is awesome. Who doesn't want a shirt that has? I wanted one when you showed me the picture. I will send you one. Um, if you wear it on stage the next time you're on stage, I, 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 I absolutely okay. probably won't do that. But <laughs> you, I have actually bought a lot of a lot of uh, wonderful things on Fab. Thank you, and, love and, that. And I love getting the emails five times a day. <laughs> um, how much stuff have you sold? So we uh, so. We started June 9th of last year, so it's basically yeah. a year and a week. Yeah. Um, we've sold some like 1.8 million something products. Yeah. Um, and so it counts up to about 3.4 products per minute since we started. It's a lot of yeah. pizza shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you had a recently, a, a, it was almost like a victory lap article in Business Week about how you crushed Bama Ring in uh, one of the Samwer Brothers clones. <laughs> and yet, today you announce that you bought a clone. No. Luster here in the UK. <laughs> it's different. So how do you, yeah. you sort of like yeah. you crushed them and it was awesome and it was great. I love, you know, but now you decided to buy these guys instead of crush them. Well, look, you know, so yeah. our whole thing is, you know, we're all about design. And when we decided to, to start Fab, you know, I wanted to get back to just really just designing user interfaces. And Bradford, his whole thing is helping people design the objects in their life. Yeah. And when we, when we started, we said the whole thing's got to be authentic. So we've got to have, you know, the most beautiful website selling the most beautiful things with beautiful service. And we have to be true to the designers. So it has yeah. to be real authentic design. And copycatting. You've talked about of, it as having an emotional sort of yeah, it, it, outlook it, it, it on totally the business. Yeah, it totally is. And yeah. we, you know, we, we, every single day, we put things on Fab, just trying to get people excited, make them smile. We focus less yeah. on sales and more on just you know, kind of, again, just but get people excited. Why not just crush right? luster? Why'd you buy them? Is well, it they so, shared so, the, so here's the deal. So yeah. we looked at, first of all, in terms of Bamarang. So the Sommer brothers. Their model is very hard to apply to an emotional business. Yeah. And um, what we decided uh, last October, we reached a million members on Fab in about five months, 50% of which had come from social sharing. Yeah. And we kind of looked back at ourselves you know, after five months and said, all right, clearly we're onto something. Let's see what we can turn this into. And you know, we have you know, board members, investors who have had their businesses cloned by the Somers. And one thing we decided is you know, we think we have an opportunity to do some brand building here. We really think that we look at Fab as not just like we're starting an e-commerce business or a store. We really think that five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we can create this brand that where people think design, they think Fab. That we really think when people think like discovering products, they think Fab. And so we said, you know, in order to create that global brand, let's go to Europe faster. Okay. Um, and especially going to Europe faster before the clones came in yep. and copied us and kind of, you know, we didn't want to see ground anybody. And so we launched in, uh, in Germany in February. We acquired a company called Casa Conda. Yep. At the time, there were six companies in Germany alone that had copied Fab's model. And we basically, we were going to either build our own team or buy a team. And we looked at, you know, who, we basically looked at what team did we think was most authentic about the kind of design, the designers, and really had, you know, they weren't just out there just copying our business, but they were really true to kind of the, the nature of design. And how so big we, is... So, so Casa Conda now, there were 25 people then, there were 100 people now yeah. in Germany. And then last month, we opened up to sell to 18 countries across Europe. But not the UK? We started selling the UK, and we started having a lot of success with it as well. Was Lester kicking your ass? No. Um, why did you buy them? So you buy them what then? we found with Luster, why not crush them like you did the Samware Brothers? <laughs> you know, you know. Cause because the UK market, we needed a good team. And, There's so, okay. And right. what we, we said you know, we either could, could build a team here in the UK or we, we could try to acquire one. And we frankly we interviewed dozens of people to see if we would you know hire you know, people here. Yeah. And Bradford fell in love with the, the team here. Yeah, I mean, Bamarang was a cheap copy of Fab.com, pixel yeah. for pixel with worse crap. It crap. was crap. Crap. Um, and Luster is a beautiful, was a beautiful yeah, site, excuse not me. Crap. <laughs> not crap, no. And actually a, a completely different point of view than say mine or the, our US buying team. It has or, its own soul. It has its yeah. own soul. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, very, it's, it's, it's very British, it's very ethereal, it's very pretty. 
um, and it's going to actually, um, yeah. we're very much looking forward to the way their buying tastes infiltrate yeah. the U.S. and the German assortment and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it wasn't a clone. I mean, yeah, they sold things on, online, uh, but a lot of people do that. They had a very, very unique point of view yeah. um, and, 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 and a, an amazing team. How many employees does Luster have? They have 25. And how, are you going to grow that to like 100 like in Germany? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan. I mean, the, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, you know, last year at this time we had 40 people total. We had 15 in New York. And we had another 25 and Now you're 400. Now we're 400. Yeah. Um, and and by know, the way, you're peaking at like, is it 100 grand a month? I mean, an hour in revenue you're doing? <laughs> um, you know, there was <laughs> so, someone had told us a number that, that Bamarang did you, you 100K in a yeah, week. And, and you said we that's did a good that, hour. That's a good hour for us in the US sometimes. Yeah. What's yeah. a good day for you in the US? A good day? Well, we, we're, we're having days where we're doing about $400,000 in sales between the US and Europe Gro right that's now. That's grosser net. That's like receipt or actual revenue? Th that's, that's term, but we, you know, we buy all our product. Okay. So for us, revenue is so gross. Okay. Yeah. Um, so can I veer off just a little bit here? You can go because, anywhere you want, Mike. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> you, so I've known you since probably 05 or 06, and, yeah. and you were the founder and CEO of Jobster. Correct. Jobster raised how much capital? $48 million. $48 million, yeah. and it effectively dead-ended. I mean, it had a liquidity event, but you said it was... It no was one made anything. Yeah. yeah. So you lost $48 or $47 million. <laughs> of people's money, people like me who are investors, right? And, and, and normal, I mean, that's pretty crushing. If I lost $47 million of someone else's money, I would probably never show my face in public again. <laughs> you know, um, How did you pick yourself up and, and like just keep going? It's, it, it's, it's a solid question. The, um, I never once thought about not trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah. And I think you know, Jobster, look, I started Jobster in 2003. And the whole idea of Jobster was use social networks for hiring people, which today seems like a no-brainer. But in 2003, it was a it was a What's novel a social concept. Network? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was before Facebook, before Twitter, before there was a LinkedIn platform. You yeah. could do all that stuff today. Yeah. Right? Well, you, but, the name was a playoff Friendster. I exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, I always say it was a great idea that was horribly executed. Um, and what yeah. I learned along the way was that you got to get the product right first and foremost. And we focused too much at Jobster on building a company, I and mean, we had thousands of customers. And I'm, we, I, yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. only rushing because I want to take some audience questions. Yeah. I don't need to hear the failure story at Jobster, although yeah. I'd love to have that interview with you. <laughs> what I want to hear is when it was all done, and, yeah. it, and like, you must have been like, my I'll, God. I'll you tell know. you what I did, Mike, yeah. is I, I, I realized that if you really want to be a good entrepreneur, focus on what you're personally good at. Yeah. And what I learned from the Jobster experience is that I'm pretty good at developing product, yeah. and I'm pretty lousy at a lot of other stuff. All right. And so I said, you know, basically what I told myself then is I'm going to be the best product manager I can possibly be. Yeah. And so what I did the day after I shut down jo or I left Jobster was I started a new company with just me and three developers. And I was the product manager and yeah. just built a product and yeah. said, you know, I'm going to get back to basics and build a product that people so like. You just and got use. back in the saddle. And, but yeah. it was totally different. I mean, job, you know, for social yeah. media, the company I did after Jobster, we didn't raise VC money. Right? We did angel yeah. money. And in fact, three of the... Three of the VCs that invested in Jobster invested in social media and, and me to say the redemption yeah. story. All right? yeah. And I said, look, give me a shot to show that you know, we can, yeah, I can make you some money this time. And we sold social media nine months later. We built up a very large user base that was very passionate about the product. And it was, you know, it was a good, short success. Yeah. And to this day, you know, at Fab, but, what I do is Brad, I'm the product I'm sorry, manager. Bradford, you were not at social media, right? No. no. What were you doing then? I was um, launching retail businesses for design companies in the US. Okay. Uh, design Within Reach, Blue Dot, writing for okay. Dwell Magazine. Okay, sorry. Yep. No, that's right. Yeah. Do you want to take some audience questions? Do whatever you want. Uh, do we have <laughs> questions? I can't see it very well, no. but I think there are people with microphones, and if you are a person with a question, we can put you two together. Raise your hand if you have a question. There's one yep. right there. This is just like um, a Sally Jesse Raphael show. Or, uh, I don't Donahue. even know what, what is that. Or, yeah, <laughs> Oprah. Well, you got to jump on the couch. Hi. I may, I may be obvious or wrong, but I see a natural fit with Pinterest. I'm sorry, yeah. it's hard to hear. A little you. louder. I, I see. I may be obvious or uh, or wrong, but I see a natural um, fit with Pinterest. Do you see them as a uh, okay. distribution yeah. or future competitors? What do you, you think? Know, Pinterest is, I think, in the category of companies like Fab that are growing very fast, um, that developed very large user bases very quickly in the last year. Um, they're not selling stuff. You know, we're, we are very much a store. 
um, and we're, you know, we're not ashamed to say that every day we sell stuff on Fab. Um, we, are, we definitely try to be an innovator and leader in social commerce. 50% um, of our 5 million members worldwide now have come from uh, social sharing. Uh, and you know, I think whether it's Pinterest or others, um, lots of folks are out there trying to show that there's great ways to discover and get inspired by products. Um, you know, they just raised 100 million something dollars. That would be interesting to see how they apply that to monetization. We get a good amount of traffic at Fab from Pinterest. It's about 2% of our traffic. Um, but it's been about 2% of our traffic since February. It hasn't, hasn't, we haven't seen it grown since February. But we're, instead of us saying, all right, well, I guess you know, Pinterest is plateau, what we do instead is try to get more out of Pinterest. So we, we're doubling down and investing more and in trying to help Fab members who want to share on Pinterest share on Pinterest and try to get good traffic back to Fab. And we'd love to work with them. Another question? Uh, over here. Hi, thanks. Um, I'm getting every day the FAB uh, newsletter, uh, the German one. Excellent. And I'm pretty bored <laughs> because it's, uh, <laughs> it's not really personalized for what I, what I like. And um, so when you're starting um, analyzing what I like, what I don't like, and sending me relevant uh, products. Um, you know, we're constantly looking at better ways to provide more relevance. Um, in Germany right now, we launch uh, six new uh, sales events per day. Uh, in the US right now, we're launching, it's almost 30 per day. Um, in the US, we have about 10,000 SKUs, so unique products on what's, the site. What's the best selling item ever? <laughs> Go is for it, it. Is it that funny? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a vibrator designed by Yves Bahar. Yeah. A vibrator? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over here. <laughs> really? <Yes>. Really? <laughs> a single, single product. Art, art by far. We saw. Oh, I mean, hold, hold on one second. Okay. I want to jump into this. If we were just an art store, we'd be. How many vibrators have you sold? Oh, thousands and thousands. Thousands. Yeah. Thousands. thousands. Maybe tens of thousands at this point. Yeah. Tens of thousands yeah. of vibrators. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, think about it, but it, it, it totally makes sense. You know what makes sense? Because it's a product I, yeah. that people don't want to go walk into a store and go shopping for. And there actually are some really beautifully designed female <laughs> massage devices yes, out there. Yes. And Massagers. they're colorful and, you know. But, uh, colorful, colorful vibrators, I imagine, yeah. would sell well online where it's yeah. anonymous. Yeah. And, yeah. But, but I got to say this, yeah. you know, we never thought we'd be an art store. And art's our number one category. We never thought we'd be a jewelry store. Did you ever two. think you'd be a vibrator store? We're not no, a vibrator not store. A <laughs> I mean, vibrator's nothing compared to the overall. But the Got a skew. little bit yeah, of no, the skin there. Little, little little we're not a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 40 to 50% of the products we sell are home products. So yeah. furniture, yeah. art, lighting. And the other um, half are sex toys? Or? The other half. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not letting this go yet. You're killing me here. You're <laughs> killing me here. <laughs> Less than a fraction of a percent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to... Hi there, I'm uh, Alex from Urban Times, and I'd like to know a little bit more about this pivot that you did. Uh, what was the time frame yeah. and sort of the capital cost uh, to go from sort of this social network yeah. and then create something entirely new? Also, isn't there something you want to do? What's that? Wasn't there, isn't that also a segue, that question, into something that you wanted to do? Something that backstage we were talking about, and I don't even know what it was. Anyway, go remember. ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, we decided to shut down the old business uh, in it was February 28th. Um, we basically, Bradford and I had a dinner where we said, you know what, let's, let's, it was, you know, this no-brainer, let's work, focus on design. And what we decided right then was to literally turn off the website immediately. We didn't want to focus any time or attention on the old thing, just focus everything on the new thing. And so uh, we went to our board of directors. We had you know, a million and a half dollars in the bank. And I said, I don't want to spend another you know, dollar or another minute working you're, on the By the way, you're talking thing. February last year. February last year, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. 2011. Yeah. And so we then basically gave ourselves uh, three months to launch the site. Um, and uh, build up, you know, basically, Bradford went out and talked to designers. Uh, I worked with our technology team and built the site and built up the audience. We had 175,000 people signed up ready for day one. And on our first day of sales, we sold $65,000 worth of the product. Oh. Um, so the, we knew we were on something. But the, the time leading yeah. up to the decision I, was probably a couple months. It started, it was like, you know, I like to think of it as it was like a, um, a, a, a breakup when you finally come to terms with the relationship going fa sour and you get your exit plan. And so it originally started with tension between the two of us, which led to, luckily, we had, you know, a decade worth of friendship to, hey, let's get out of the office, which was Jason's kitchen, 
um, and let's go have some wine, which is a shared love of ours, and um, talk honestly. And you know, over a series of weeks, it led yeah. to the discussion yeah. that. But, but once we decided to do it, it, it was instantaneous. It was instant, though. Yeah. So if, if I might, Mike, um, hey. the founders of Luster are here, and we just want to call them out right and congratulate there. them yes. right over there for yeah. uh, well, join, welcome to the Fab team, and we're thrilled to be launching Fab UK today. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> So, uh, wh how much did you pay for Luster? <laughs> uh oh. Any other questions? Uh oh. Why uh -oh. is that weird? What? We got time left. We're, Why is you know, we're a private company, and uh, we, it was an all stock transaction, and uh, the entire Luster team is going to be. Uh, had they part raised? Of Fab. Had they raised money before? They did. They raised a million pounds. Um, What's happening behind me? Are they suggesting we get off stage? It looks right there. All right. I want to ask one more question, then we're done. It's going to be a quick answer. Yeah. Louis, don't do that. It's weird. You hate when I do that. <laughs> yeah. are, you going to, are you going to go public, or are you willing to take a buyout offer at some point? You know, um, we, we don't even internally really focus that much on how much we're selling. We just focus on how do we build a business over the long term. So you're willing to sell at the right terms. No, no, no. no. We, are, yeah. we, are, we are focused on building a business that, you know, I'll put it this way. Yeah. The realization that I had last October, when we got together, and I said, you went, I, I spent the last 10 years thinking about what company I want to start next, and the realization with this one is, this is the last company I'm right. ever going to do because I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is a once yeah. in a lifetime, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, opportunity, and we yeah. love doing it together yeah. and with the team we've built, and we hope to be doing this 10, 20, 30 years from now. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for uh, <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thanks. <laughs> Great.